Doom slaughter maps encourage bad game design, but only if you're not careful. Hear me out on this one. My name's Austin. Let's dive right in to this. Now, first of all, what's a slaughter map? It's made popular in the video game Doom, in which you have a bunch of monsters in an area cramped together, all coming at you, and you just will blow everything away like a slaughter by the name. But I do want to make it clear that I'm not saying that slaughter maps do obviously, obviously must have bad game design, or that they're not fun, which they can be. They can be designed well and be fun, but if you are not careful, things can get a little bit tense. Getting too tense, Doom 2 reference. So first of all, there are three categories that I think that they could possibly go wrong, and I'll go into detail of each one. First, artificial difficulty. Second, overly thick enemy density. And last, lack of weapon variety. So let's start off with artificial difficulty. What is that? It's when something is made harder and it doesn't really need to be. A perfect example of this is making things hard just for the simple sake of being hard. Now user made maps are typically the slaughter maps and they're made for an extra challenge. When the base game is just not enough, let the player step in and mod things tougher. But the thing is, in our quest to make things harder than the base game when that is just not enough anymore, sometimes we go overboard. See, there you have to have fun when you play a game but you also want it to be a challenge. That way you can work for it and have the time to get there and feel that sense of accomplishment when you get there. If you do, that's the thing. It's not knowing that mystery that really keeps you driving forward. Knowing that you can do it, just maybe possibly all if it just comes together on the right day. But in our quest to make things challenging, we go too crazy and make it hard for the sake of it. We make it so hard that it begins to lose some of that fun factor. The whole point we're playing the game for in the first place to challenge ourselves in fun, we're only getting half of that equation. Sure, we're challenging ourselves, obviously. If you put like 10 cyber demons in a two foot radius room, yeah, it's gonna be challenging. What? Who wouldn't it be hard to? But is it really fun? Are you really enjoying yourself when that happens? Do you really feel like that you're putting the abilities and the skills that you learn to the test, the whole point of that challenge in the first place to test yourself? Or is it just cheap? That's the thing. When you start making things hard for the sake of it, you lose some of that factor. And slaughter maps can tend to do that. In the quest to make things more difficult, well, let's just spam a bunch of enemies in without thinking about their placement. A good map designer will be able to place things right and make them hard via playtesting and everyone coming together to say, hey, I did well on this, hey, I didn't do well on this part. And that's how they reach what works. Brings you right into the second point. Overly thick, T-H-I-C-C, -C, enemy density. In the quest to make things harder, we put a lot more enemies on the map. Because when the base game first comes out, the devs don't really have the full idea of what the community is capable of, and well, neither do we till we get in there and practice and play and figure everything out of what we can do. It's an easy way to make things harder is adding more enemies, but you have to consider the design of how you do it. It's not just what you add, it's not just how many you add, it's how you do it. So rather than putting in a pack of 50,000 revenants, what if you place them at strategic locations? Make it tough for the player to have to maneuver around or figure out a strategy on how to take them out. Maybe they have to think about their ammo counts. Maybe their ammo, which is also a design decision, is a little bit pulled back and they don't have a lot and they have to decide what to use where, landing their shots and making sure they don't waste it in order to put more pressure on them for later. See what I mean there? Maybe you can pair up the enemies with each other. Doom Eternal does this really well. They will put a pressure unit with a ranged unit. So for example, they'll have a Hell Knight and a Cacodemon. The Knight gets up and close in your face and pressures you, and the Cacodemon fires away from a distance. That's also why that works better than, say, a Knight and a Pinky, because they just don't pair well together. They're both pressure units. So the decisions in the design come down to how you do it, not just what you do. Yes, more enemies is harder. But what if you could have, just listen to me, what if you could have more enemies placed better, thought more thoroughly through, how's that for a tongue twister right there, and make it more fun instead of just hard? You can have the enemy density if you do it right, if you think about what works. Sometimes less is more. You can have more fun, challenging stuff with less monsters and an overall more enjoyable experience, even if it isn't balls to the wall, extremely meme level hard, if you just think about how you place it and what you do. That's where the Doom Eternal Master levels come into play. 
they think about those sort of things as from a design perspective and also add additional tricks and traps, map 8 of Doom 2, to figure out how to make the player sweat. So it's not just the enemy count, it's where you put them. Maybe you add in an extra buff totem in Doom Eternal or extra environmental hazards. It just depends. Do it with classic Doom 2. Figure, and of course Doom 1, figure out what you can do to make the enemies better without just slapping copy and paste in. Brings you to the next point. When you have artificial difficulty, when you have overly thick enemy density, you begin to have a lack of weapon variety. So when things get so packed thick like a can of sardines or whatever the phrase is, yeah, I think that's it, what do you do? You tend to turn to your best and biggest, boldest, most powerful, brutal weapons, like the BFG, for instance, in Doom, or well, maybe even to a lesser extent the Super Shotgun and Rocket Launcher, but think about it. That's mostly what you use in slaughter maps. Yeah, you might use a chain gun, but it's mostly those weapons. Why? Everything is packed so tensely close tight together that you can benefit from the splash damage, and really, that's your best option. If you have a thick horde of enemies that the game really wasn't designed to be around, because these really weren't designed from the start this way, people in the desk probably didn't envision 10,000 monster maps, then it's not going to flow as well unless you balance it. You begin to lose some of the variety in your weapons when you take just spam, 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 BFG, boom, 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 spam, spam. If that's all you do, that's that's it. It doesn't have the extra excitement. And Okay, I need to use this weapon in this situation. I have this much ammo. This enemy is here. If I use a chain gun on this Cacodemon, it will give him a high pain chance. If I think about this, how to use everything. See, it's your resource management that the new Dooms are very much priding themselves on. And the classic Doom, it, it can do it too if it's done right. Think about it, you could have a pack of enemies and at the very back have an arch vial resurrect them. Just when you think you're done with it, you have to go with the arch vial next. That is smart game design rather than just saying, here's 50,000 arch vials, here you go. So you can really get the meme levels of things like with the Ultra Gunner, it's a custom made mod for some of the crowd control, twitch controlled streams that I do. It's basically a cyber demon sized chain gunner that shoots kamikaze revenants at you and basically they explode and turn into a bunch of arch files. That is meant to be a little over the top, not for actual gameplay. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. That is an overarching theme that just keeps coming back to it. Lack of weapon variety will get old if you're just spamming your BFG. There has to be more. You have to offer more weapons to use your full arsenal, use all of the skills that the player has earned so they can finally put it to the test, complete that test, and feel that sense of accomplishment when they get to the end of that challenge. That's what it all boils down to. You need to have fun. You need to make it hard. You need to have a challenge, but don't make things difficult just for the sake of it. Don't just place enemies in there just to make the level harder, just to look fancier and cooler and to have 10,000 monsters. Add it to where you have different weapon types that you can use and guns and things to keep the player on their toes so they enjoy themselves through the experience and use their brain more, which you will absolutely do on a slaughter map because even with all the things here, it's still really, really hard. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you like analysis and commentary like this and click my video here because I think you'll like it. My name's Austin, talk to you in Discord and I'll see you in the next video. If you hear this, comment, I heard this.